Hello, Adalo makers. Um, hope everybody's having a great week. As part of our ongoing efforts to um, help makers understand maybe uh, best practices and more performant ways to uh, build applications using the Adalo platform, uh, we thought it would be fun to recreate a high profile, high traffic uh, app that is in widespread use today. It's associated with uh, a well-known uh, coffee shop that some of you may have frequented at some point in the past. And the idea here in recreating an app like this is to show people um, something that of course they can, um, that they find familiar, because I think that reduces some of the complexity and maybe mystery associated with otherwise introducing a, an entirely new interface and a concept, um, but also um, because you've quite likely used this app before, um, you might have actually interacted with one of these interfaces before. So what we're trying to show here um, in recreating this app, we're going to show you a number of best practices that you can hopefully take away from this video and use when you're building your own application. So uh, with that, I will handle or hand, I should say, the uh, screen over to my colleague, Kyle. Thanks, Jason. So this is a really fun app to rebuild because if I'm being honest, I probably drink too much coffee from this place at one time. And so getting to rebuild and spending a lot of time and just really analyzing and breaking down what's actually in the app when I'm viewing it went a really long way in just recreating the app. Let, let's just view the app and then we'll, we'll go into what, what went into making it. So let's just do a quick preview. As you can see, it has my name. It tells me, you know, who I am, what the logged in user is. And then I have all this information that I can scan through and see the highlighted options or drinks or whatever it is that your company may want to show. And then I can go ahead and click scan to scan my rewards or pay. And I can click back and forth and, and see this. This is just a QR code that is from our marketplace. And then let's say I want to place an order. I can go through and then begin to click the different categories. Um, and then I can drill down. And then my next step is to click into this and actually create the order or the individual item and where you can add it to your cart, do customizations. That'll be in the next video. But for now, I just wanted to show how this is broken down into categories. Um, why breaking it down into categories is important as opposed to a list within a list. And then one feature that I'm really enjoying that I've noticed, not this, this particular app, but other apps I use outside of a dollar are starting to do is do this global search feature where there's the search icon and then a search menu comes down and then I can um, type in something and then anything that matches that will show up and I can find that information quickly, click on it and get to the information. So let's just kind of take each screen, break it down. And I can even see, you know, what are my reward points? What can I get for each item too as well? Um, but let's go to the builder. So a couple of things you notice, there's not a lot of things actually going on within this screen that was done on purpose. The more things you add to your screen, the heavier it becomes, the more it has to render, you're going to hear us say that a lot because it's actually just that important. Um, what I have here, I've got a couple different, let's call them containers. I use background rectangles for that. This is my rewards container. If we go back here, we can see the reward information. This is really important if you want people to be excited about using your app and feel like they're earning something. A little gamification here will help do that. And then... This is just a card list. And if, if you notice, the card list actually can serve two different purposes. Um, you can have information here where they can click. You can click here and learn more. So you can send them to a different screen in your app or a different website, depending on what your use case is. And one thing I didn't know about card list, but uh, you can use, is you can do some form of visibility with just not having this item here. And I'll show you what that what that actually means in just a second. So there's actually an option for two buttons, but only one button is shown. What I've done 
is in this card list, I have a collection just dedicated to this home feed. Um, if this was your coffee shop, you would be in charge of this home feed. You wouldn't want users to post a bunch of things in here that you didn't want to highlight. So you would just be in control of this. And in this home feed, let's look, take a look at the properties. I've got options for a title. So that's going to look familiar. A description. And I've just put a parenthesis in there. Make it only four lines max. Think about how much screen real estate you have, and you can only say so much within that one post. And then I've got an option for a button one and a button two. It's really important when you drill down into this list for this first button, I have the title pulled in from that particular record. So I'm not doing a global uh, or a relationship. It's that particular record. And then on the second button, I have it to be home feed button number two. And why that's important is this top one has a button number two, but the second one does not. And so that button doesn't even appear. And so it creates a visibility effect that if you felt like you needed to use a custom list because you only wanted that button to show if there was something there, then you had to do a different visibility rules, but the card list will do that. And um, it was really a big deal. And then something I'm I'm not going to get into the weeds here, but then you can have a, where does button one link to? Is it a website? Is it a screen? And then one thing I'm starting to do on all my home feed items, if you notice, there's, it doesn't feel like there's a traditional order. Like it has 210, Blackberry. There's not necessarily, it's not an alphabetical order here. What you can do if you want to create your own order is just do a number property and put in numbers there and then just tell it, hey, sort by the order low to high or high to low or however you want to do that. I went with the custom, or I'm sorry, the card list over the custom list for a couple of reasons. One, the custom list was starting to add a lot of weight to the screen. Um, I'm talking like it was 20 to 30 kilobytes um, bigger than using the card list. And then when I did a performance test with the card list versus the custom list, I went from a... 21 with a custom list to a 45 with using a card list and not giving up a lot of variables or giving any creativity or design. It was really phenomenal. I was like, the card list is definitely the way to go for this home screen to the point where then I begin to adopt that throughout the entire app. So again, instead of doing a custom list, this is a card list. We can click here. This is a simple list. This is a card list. And if you start going through some of your favorite apps, you'll start to notice a trend. They either have something similar to a card list or to a simple list. And then um, you can just use, these are just buttons and these are buttons, just buttons. What I've seen makers do in the past that starts to weigh down their app is here. What they will do is um, they will have multiple buttons here or they'll have different things and you can do three different options with your buttons. So I would definitely recommend doing that. And then let me show you one other feature that I've started to play with called global options, which is a relationship to the user. And right now this app only has one relationship in the entire collections and any of the collections right now. That way I don't become bogged down by anything pulling. So right now, if you see, see it says, hello, Kyle, star balance and my stars but let's say i want this to be a cupcake business instead of using stars i'm just going to change this to a already preset global option that i have hit save for that for my user i'm then going to click scan and if you notice this is now a cupcake these are now cupcake balances and i now change this to high there and that will change for the entire app so I can go back and forth really quickly and make updates really fast. And if you notice the, the point totals here, I changed this to two and 10. The maker or the end user didn't have to do any kind of update to their app. It just changed for them. So I can make these changes on the fly within the collection. So that's just something I've been working on with the Starbucks app or Star Ducks app, excuse me. And my next step in the next video will show going from this menu list item here and how we can add this to a cart, make some customizations, and then do some total and checkout and things like that with uh, and doing an ordering app. Jason, what kind of questions do you have for me? 
Gosh, a million questions and observations. Um, again, for the benefit of the viewers who maybe haven't seen any previous videos that Kyle and I have recently done, I'm still, my name's Jason Gilmore. I'm the CTO here at Adelo. My background has been, my entire career has been spent um, coding, uh, writing code for custom applications in a wide variety of industries, publishing, environmental, um, architecture and design and so forth. So what I find so fascinating about doing these videos with Kyle is obviously he's demonstrating a true mastery of, of um, how to go about building apps in Adalo, as you can see by this pixel perfect representation of the Stardux application. Um, as we're walking through this, I'm kind of sitting here and thinking about like, how I would go about building this um, with code, right? And um, one of the observations I, I had regarding Kyle's approach to building that home screen pertained to how the data found in each card was effectively denormalized, meaning there aren't a bunch of foreign key relationships that have been created within multiple collections. Um, for several reasons, I would suppose, and Kyle, correct me if I'm wrong. One, well, less table joins, better performance, that's for sure, right? We're going to have better mm -hmm. performance if we're not reaching into a bunch of tables. Two, and I think this is critical, imagine this app being used by a, like a smaller coffee shop or, well, or even a larger coffee company with a marketing team they might not be technical, right? In fact, chances are they're not. And if you can make whatever administrative screen you're using, not only easier to use, um, but dare I say, even a little more fun to use, then they are, I've seen this time and again throughout my career, they are more frequently going to use that tool to update in this case, the home screen of the app, right? If you make it easier to use, again, dare I say, make it more fun to use. Sure, you do introduce the possibility for some inconsistencies um, because you're not using normalized records in your collections. But again, context is always king when building these sorts of apps. And um, I'm, I would be perfectly happy making that trade-off if the outcome is going to be the marketing team or the end user updating that home screen more often, right? The second observation I had pertains to something that we didn't even discuss, but Kyle, I don't remember which screen, but I noted that there was a favorites tab um, somewhere off of the order. Mm -hmm. From an end user's perspective, like, why should an app have a favorites tab? The answer is obvious, because if that's the thing I order over and over again, that's the thing I'm probably going to order the next time I go. But from the app maker's perspective, what, what does a favorites tab give the app maker? Well, the user is going to make less clicks, going to load less screens to rebuild or to customize the order that they're they're probably going to make again anyway, right? Mm -hmm. So if you can create a favoriting style feature or a starring feature, which a Dalo can do quite well, well, you're going to cut down on the number of things that they're clicking, the number of screens that they're loading, and you're going to help them accomplish whatever it is that you want them to accomplish that much faster. Would you say those are fair points to make, Kyle, with regards to your strategy associated with building these apps? Absolutely. I, it's, it's interesting when we have these conversations because Jason very much show can like visually see the app and know everything that's happening in the back end and figure everything out that way. And I come at from the opposite end. I come in and I want to, I'm the end user. How would I, what's logical in my brain and how would I just use this from a, an app user in end app user. And then I think about, well, how can I make this happen in Adalo? How can I make the logic so that as the end user, I just don't think about it. Like, it's just so intuitive that I just do it. And I just, I, it's just simple. And so I, 
I think Adalo makes that easy to like combine those two worlds and then having Adalo do all the coding and all the stuff in the background. Just it's been amazing to like see what people have built doing that. And I'm just amazed, honestly, like uh, it might be hard for the audience to believe, but we don't exactly as well, maybe it is obvious. We don't exactly rehearse <laughs> these uh, conversations. So this really is the first time I'm seeing this uh, particular app that Kyle's created. And I just, I cannot believe how effectively pixel perfect it is. Like it looks exactly like that other app, right? And uh, I think it's pretty remarkable that that you can you can build something like this um, in in a Dalo. So um, and, anyway, and this wasn't this wasn't like weeks worth of work either. This was a few hours. Yeah, that that that's really all it comes down to. It's, it's wild. Amazing. So thank you uh, to the audience uh, for your time. I, uh, we're going to post this up to YouTube and all the various channels very shortly, along with a uh, kind of a summarized list of these best practices. And as always, we welcome your questions um, on YouTube, in the Adalo forum, and anywhere else you find us online. Thank you.